great. Thank you for coming. The first pioneer is all the way from Canada, Erin Kennedy. And I want to acknowledge her because she has started Robot Guard, which was funded on Indigo. And she's also been featured on the Forbes, the Wire, and other local newspapers. And something that's really cool is that most of her robots have actually won multiple Maker Fair editor choices. So we're really excited to have her and show her demonstrations for us. I also want to acknowledge that she has an online hangout in case you also have a robot somewhere that you can join. And her hangout is the robot party. So everyone from across the world joins in and demonstrates and they're all in that. So give a hand for Kennedy all the way from Canada. Thank you. I really feel like a robot right now. That's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, lifetime goal achieved. I am now a robot. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, have you ever noticed that everything around us is stationary? All of the objects that surround our everyday lives d have no way of interacting with us. They are just uh, inanimate objects. They have no idea what our behaviors are, and um, they're non-participating non obstacles in our lives. So imagine if we could live and work in a space where all of the objects around us can shapeshift to optimize our pro productivity for different tasks and um, do different things. And we could maybe also even add automation to our objects as well. So this brings up a pretty um, significant use point in the realms of accessibility. So if we could have objects move um, on our command or with sensors, then it would greatly improve um, how people go about their lives. They will no longer have to um, be afraid of these like boundaries that are made by obstacles, but instead it will almost seem fluid to them. So an example of this would be uh, you could have a doorknob that is able to be twisted open or um, if you're reaching for an object uh, then the objects could like nudge around to make it easier. Now so far we've only spoken about single objects, but if we combine multiple together to create multiple movements, then we could create an automated system of movements. And um, what this would allow us to do is uh, be able to connect different ones together and create a whole chain of movements. And this could actually be applied, say, in natural disaster settings. So if we um, wanted to be able to move some objects uh, from one place to another, then just uh, have the automated system be able to do this. So an example would be to transport medical supplies from one spot to another, or you could also uh, create mixtures of food packages. The whole idea is to remove the redundancy of uh, moving things around. Uh, we have to save the raw human decision-making talent for um, something useful that, that is not just basic tasks. So how could we invent or find some technology to help solve this problem? Well, we could create a robot to help make objects move. So there would be some key design factors in this robot, such as it would have to be lightweight, so that way we can transport multiple in a bag and deploy them. It would also have to be flexible or compliant, and the mechanism would need to not be strained very much, so that way it uses less power. And since there's multiple objects out there in the world, you would need a way to universally mount them to everything. It would have to be very simple to make an object be able to be actuated. And finally, 
we would need a way to link the robots together. So, so far we've been exploring some prototypes that we've been making in our home lab. And um, what we have right here in this little demo is a robot that is made out of paper and the chassis design is constructed with origami. So that way we can create different mechanisms and have it still be flexible and it can um, compress in, into itself so that way it can um, actuate something. Uh, and for sensing where the robot's position is in space, then we can actually use shadows of the, ob of the robot itself with a tiny IR reflectance sensor. And if you just place these strategically on the robot body design, then you'll be able to sense its position. And as for behavior, you can attach sensors that work locally with the environment, or you could also make it a cloud-enabled robot, uh, say for your home if you wanted a plant to move when it's too cold outside or something. So what we have here to demo today is um, some of the robots here. Um, so, so essentially when I move this switch up, then this motor starts to spin and it's on a winch um, and it will pull the fishing line. Now, it may need a bit of a uh, push to get going here. But essentially, it's able to, um, when the origami folds compress together, it's able to open this box lid. And since this is just a proof of concept, we can create a better version of this and uh, increase the functionality even more. Plus, there's something poetic about a robot being able to open a box of electronics that's used to make a robot. <laughs> so how this idea came about was when I was creating a new robot creature. So this here is a robot creature named RoboBird. And um, I was wondering, what if the question was flipped on its head? Instead of creating something new, what if we took something that already exists and make it into a robot? And so um, that's where this idea came in for the inanimate object actuation adhesive. Uh, one of the cool things about how I've been making this is that I don't have a lot of the parts in my own lab, especially for creating uh, flexible circuit boards. So I've been posting up videos, photos of what I'm making, and people are able to send me packages sometimes if they see that I need a part, and then I can implement it into a new design. So we call ourselves the Robot Party Rock Stars, and it's because of a Google Plus Hangout that we host, and it connects robot makers from all over the world uh, together, <coughs> which is an important theme in the maker movement. So to sum up, um, objects uh, need to be our teammates rather than uh, obstacles in our lives. And it could have great impacts um, creating spaces that shape shift to our dreams. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed uh, looking at all your YouTubes and, <coughs> and especially creation of uh, flexible uh, uh, circuit boards. My question is, if I was sitting on top of a mountain and you were, had a magic wand, what would be the three things you would see this technology being applied for the masses? Um, well, if you had a magic wand, I probably wouldn't want it applied to the masses, but applied more to like a natural disaster situation. So in that case, what I would want to see is just being able to have like a backpack on 
where inside of it you have robots that are similar to this but created out of sheet metal, so more sturdy, better design, so that's um, one wish. And that it would be so straightforward to use that people could use it to create these automated systems whenever they would need it. They would be able to pull out a robot and then attach it to another one and then just instantly have this rapid deployment of movement now and that wouldn't have existed before. Uh, so that was number two. And um, number three would be that um, this would, uh, the fabrication would not be that expensive so that way it could become a reality. Thank you. So I know the product is still in early stages and the development is going on. But I was just kind of curious, like, what is your imagination in terms of the capacity of the robot? Like, moving the medical aid supplies is like thousands of miles, or moving in home, which is like, you know, few right. uh, feet. So I was kind of curious. Yeah, that is a curious question. Um, so. The main design idea would be similar in both cases, but the robots made for the home would probably be the size of this, maybe a bit longer, um, and uh, really flimsy and flexible, just something that if it were to be broken, then it wouldn't affect that much. Um, but for medical supplies, I was imagining it could be created out of sheet metal, um, and folded, sanded so that nobody like slices their finger off or anything. And um, that, that one you probably wouldn't see in a home unless it was for a really um, intense ac accessibility application. So those are the two main ways. I think my first uh, go-to market idea would be to um, go towards making this a uh, robot kit for people who want to add actuation to cardboard robots um, instead of having it so that it's like all servos that you put into this and you build it. Instead, it's you build something and then you add um, movement to it. That was my going to be follow up question, which is your first go to market. <laughs> Thank you. Could you speak a little bit about how the robots are powered and if you plan on disseminating them throughout the world if you're thinking about renewable energy sources for some of the uh, robots? Yeah, sure. So right now the robots are powered via um, USB on my laptop. I would assume they would draw about maybe 200 milliamps and this could be decreased with a better motor design. I'm just using off-the-shelf motors currently. As for renewable energy, uh, if we were able to decrease the um, amperage uh, by maybe half, then it could be possible to have a little solar panel on the base of the robot charging a lithium polymer battery that could um, power it, um, I'd say maybe for a runtime of four hours. And that would be continuous movement, which um, you probably wouldn't be doing in a chain of uh, actuation. Thank you. One, one of the interesting things about robots is that if a robot becomes widely used, we stop calling it a robot, like washing machine. Yeah. And on my way here, I think I went through one automated door with my key swipe. I went down an elevator, went down an escalator, went into a train through doors that open and close automatically, up another escalator through a hole in the chain link fence. <laughs> Those were my directions anyway. So what is the difference between your robots and these other robots that I interacted with just coming here on an ordinary trip? Uh, hopefully none. Um, I just call them robots because that's what I'm interested in. And uh, uh, like it's sort of like a nickname it's faster to say than inanimate object actuation adhesive. If these were to be <laughs> incorporated into everyday life, then I'm sure people will come up with a better name for it, like thing mover. 
on Thingy Mover or something. Thank you.